What is up, y'all? This is Kyrie from the All Things Black Podcast, hitting you with another reaction video today. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Tyler Perry reveals how he built his media empire. It's off the Expeditiously Podcast with T.I. But um, I was listening to this a little bit earlier when I was at work, and then uh, I just stopped it because I wanted to get the full reaction with you guys. But they did mention a couple of things. Oh, I'll make sure I'm talking to the mic. Jesus. They did mention a couple of things that um, I definitely wanted to talk about because... The way Tyler Perry breaks this down is very interesting. So let's get a full reaction to it. Yeet. I've been watching a lot of Cash Nasty. Anticipated, extremely lucrative plays, films, books, and shows, all right? Now, this brother would, would, would become yeah, such an icon in our culture and has been such a beacon in our community that I truly could never say enough to describe his impact. Now... Quite some time ago, uh, you probably saw pictures, videos, or even heard uh, whispers of the, 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 the culmination of black excellence that uh, came to Atlanta to celebrate the, the, the opening uh, of, his, of his film studio that, is, that, that makes everything else pale salute. to comparison. Definitely salute. If there's any way we could give a standing ovation through audio, I think we would be remiss not to please the everybody welcome. Mr. Tyler Perry. Thanks. What's, up, What's, What's going up, on, bro? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Man, thank you for coming. Yo, come on. Come on. You know it. Atlanta had to be here. You dig what I'm saying? First yeah. of all, man, thank you for everything that you've done for the culture. And the so I might skip past the introductions. You do, but yeah, man, for sure absolutely. I could. On the show, what does that mean? And ownership was key for me because when I was a kid, man, my father. Okay, uh, yeah. So this is where they're talking about you know ownership. What? Listen, man, that's what we tequila. usually do. Where is it? Let's go with it. Let's all go right. with it. So uh, now what we do here is have a conversation, man, that young men, women, uh, uh, and entrepreneurs can, can use to move themselves forward yeah. in their journey. Yeah. Could you please tell me how you came up with your business, your business model? So I went looking into, into trying to figure out how do you own a show? What does that mean? And ownership was key for me because when I was a kid, man, my father uh, worked for this. He built, built houses, this white man that he loved, right? This white okay. man he built these houses for. And uh, he, come on in here. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the good on, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Introduce, there you go. There you go. Introduce Tyler to the tequila, man. <laughs> no, no. I know, I know 1942 mm. well. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay, all right, all right. Got him a little ginger ale. Yeah, you know I, was, I was about to get deep. You t no, no, nah, I'm man, good. I'm good, on, I'm good on the ice. Nah, we're going to take it neat. We're going to take yeah. it neat today. Yeah. So You got to get some glasses in here, man. Man, come nah, on. man. You know, we don't want people to get too comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right. No, no. Here's what Come on, sit down. Let's get on up out of here. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, man. cheers. To make it. Hey, Tip. Tip moved that bottle real quick, though. He's like, man, this is expensive. My um, my um, father worked building houses for this white man, as I was saying, and he would come home so happy because he had made eight hundred dollars. He made his money. I made this much money, and, I, and he had to pay his employees out because he had other thugs under him. Right. And I always watched a man who built the house and owned it sell it for eighty thousand dollars. Mm. So he got eighty, and my father got eight hundred, and he mm. thought it was a wonderful thing. And I even remember being a kid trying to talk my mother and my father into. Uh, actually owning, the, buying the house and selling it. But, you know, they came from a Jim Crow South. That kind of right. reality wasn't for them. They didn't get it. Right. So ownership was the key, man. Ownership. That's the thing that made me, that has changed everything in my life. I own every play, every movie, uh. every character, mm. every TV show. It's all mm -hmm. owned by me. And that is what has set the difference of me being able to say, I'm going to set a path where I can open the door for everybody else. Absolutely. Or waiting for somebody to give me a job. Man, that, that yeah. you touch on a key point when you say ownership. <clears throat> That's an excellent point. I try and stress that all the time with me and my ventures, you know. If I'm making albums, I need to own them. If I'm doing a podcast, I need to own it. These reaction videos, I don't just because of, you know, it's someone else's content I'm reacting to. The commentary is, I guess, um, original. But the actual, you know, video might not make me anything. But, you know, what it does is it introduces you guys to me. And I get to share my opinions like I would on the podcast, you know. But, yeah, it's very, very, very – I was digging this whole point. And you come from absolutely nothing. Yeah, facts. You come from the bottom. And yeah. it's a lot of people listening who also would love to come from the bottom and, and put their dreams into into effect to, to yield the kind of results that you have. Uh, how do you start? Like ownership, because usually – we defer our ownership to someone for startup costs. Yeah. So how do you start? 
for me, I wasn't going to do that. Mm. I, I um, worked, went to H&R Black, like H&R Block, did my taxes, <laughs> H&R my tax Black. Money, invested in my first play, put mm. it up. It didn't work out. I um, went on tour for every time I do the show, but there was always somebody who wanted to uh, audition. Uh, I'm a who, I'm wait, damn, this tequila. Hit me <laughs> hold, hold on, I'm going to have to, hold, something else in this 1942. I'm going to have to slow down a minute. Wait a minute. You can Let hear me McGee concentrate for a second. Give boy. me some water. Y'all bring me some water. <laughs> so, so you say. I said audition. No, no, what I said. So I have my, <laughs> <laughs> tip, tip, tip. All right. So I had my, um, my tax money and I put it into my first play. That's smart. And outside of that, there was somebody who, you know, only 30 people showed up, but there was somebody who wanted to invest in it. And that person did one play that didn't work out. Then another person came along. They wanted to invest. You know how these shady people are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. They, so for years we were doing that, but but I wouldn't give up any control. Even right. when I got to Hollywood, but I had been successful with plays. But at that time, I had made $75 million doing live shows. I got Ooh. to Hollywood, nobody knew who I was. Right. But I, 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 I cultivated us. Mm-hmm. I worked with us, right. you know. I nurtured us as an audience. They took care of me. See, I took um, care of them. <clears throat> I gave them the, the best. That's I what had. it's. That's what it's gonna take, right? If you want um, anything worthwhile, is hard. Anything um, that can be lucrative down the line is gonna probably not show a lot of. I would nah, yeah. It's probably not gonna show a lot of promise at the beginning, you know. But you know. I, c- I would liken it to being a rapper, how we, we have to put out music, do shows, do all this stuff to try and get people to, you know, follow us and engage with us and invest in us, you know? So it's like, you know, you have to build your own, but uh, you have to build it up locally, I guess, is what he's saying, you know, with, within us. And then for it to go worldwide, you know? So I, I was digging this whole commentary. So right. It's like we always get a degree or something, and we run from the culture. That's right. Yeah. We don't want to live around us. We don't want to work around us. That's right. Our culture is... Word the boozy. Word the boozy, though, you know? A lot of people get killed in their own hoods, so maybe that's why. But facts. Rich, man, and every other race comes in and rapes and mines everything we have and take it out, but they facts. don't leave anything... Whitewashes it. For us. They so don't cultivate. Ex- exactly right. So when we can take our own culture and and have it be, uh, here's what I'll say about that. Like, um, segregation was a horrible thing. Right. Horrible thing. Yeah. When it ended, a lot of black businesses ended. Okay. Because under, black business businesses did so much better under segregation because we were forced to buy from each other. That's right. When that ended, we just went in all different directions and we're buying from everybody but us. Hence the uh, uh, the sentiment behind uh, the late, great uh, uh, Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s statement, I believe I've integrated my people into a burning building. Mm, mm. Uh, that was one of his yeah. last quotes That's before his assassination. Mm. Uh, I believe that he saw that the very inclusion or integration that he was fighting for turned around to bite the community in the ass just like you're suggesting yeah but it's a listen it's a beautiful thing i love that i can go anywhere my, my sure. son can go to any school I, I love that sure. but but uh, what i'm hoping that we've remembered inside of it that we can go anywhere else why not go back to us mm. now that lays some burden at our feet too to be completely honest we got to step up our game that's in, right in professionalism in in how we honor the customers and how we honor the people that are holding us up so that is what is important and once we can do that and, and get our own people to realize because I, I know listen i know black people are saying i ain't going over there to deal with that yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah but i ain't buying other brand you got security issues yeah. you got Ax. customer service yeah, issues exactly right so you know you got manufactured distribution time, yeah, exactly time. A- absolutely you, you're supposed to open at nine you're not there at 11 30 because you, you know. feel like getting up i mean come on <laughs> so so once we learn to really um be professional and a forthright and just downright organized with everything. Mm-hmm. I think that a lot of us will start to support us, and that's what happened with me, man. My right. audience is die hard, loyal. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm talking about like I mean, and they have been ever yeah. since you were doing live shows. Yeah. What made you go into like <laughs> plays? What indication did you have that stage plays were? Why not straight to movies? I I never felt like anybody so was taking around seriously a little bit to the point. Yeah. I wanted that to, I was, to elevate um, it. Interested I, in about you know Tyler Perry plays before I knew who you were like I having some familiarity with it yeah. like whole time and you've been speaking for them like you know 
fifty male character, mm. and um, and I had just done my old man. You try my hand at at a female character, mm. and um, and I had just done my old man character in, on, in my first play, and it done really well. Okay, so I said, okay, I'm gonna try a female character. I was only gonna do it one show in Chicago, the Regal Theater, 79th Stony Island. I was scared to death the first time I do it. I, <laughs> I didn't rehearse with the costume. I never put the costume on. Right. It was me, Brown, and Cora. We all on stage. They're like, you're not gonna put the costume on. I'm like, no. Day of the show, I put it on. Man, I was so crazy uncomfortable. Man. But um, but the audience loved it. Yeah, it went. I was just like, really? You just kind of channel. Was it? Is it your mom? Your that, grandma? That's that's totally my. I got an aunt in Texas named Mayola Ciparan. That's, that's a real name. Mayola, Mayola Ciparan. Mayola Ciparan. And, Mayola Ciparan. And, and Mayola Ciparan. And she. Hey, you know, I know how this be too, man. I got a sister. I said her name in the song. She talking about she want to get paid. I already know his aunt want. She wants some. She's like, where my percentage at? Oh, Lord. like that? She wear that wig. It's always crooked, and she always smoking. <laughs> and that's, that's her, man. That's her. Funny, funny as can be. Now, now, uh, at, at your meteoric rise, man, to success uh, has not come without some. Okay, level here, we of criticism. So, here we go. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You go. You being polite. <laughs> I mean, yeah. man. You know, we brothers. Here. I was one of them. Yeah, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I mean, but you have people. Like, you know, say Dave Chappelle uh, being one and, you know, just other people in Hollywood and in, in, in the industry that say it is much easier, especially for a black man to become successful when he chooses to put on a dress. Mm. How would you address that? I, I Listen, Chappelle is one of the most brilliant people I have ever seen in my life, man. And right just, on. Uh, just not just in comedy, but the man is smart, a heavy, right brilliant on. thinker. So if that is the case in Hollywood, then okay, that's the case. But you got to understand, that's not my case, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't, I, nobody owned that dress, right? But me, that's right. Nobody told me it's a two billion dollar franchise. Uh, nobody told me to put it on. That's right. Nobody Slight makes flex. me put it on. Okay. No, nope, that was all on stage. Black man owned the whole show. Right. It was my choice, right? So when I got to Hollywood and and wanted to do uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Um, it was my choice. That's right. And 19 movies since then, it's been my <laughs> choice. So, so I don't, I don't. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the way it's been for some other men who have had done that. But for me, let me tell you how I look at this, man. I'm not a man that enjoys wearing a dress. Uh, for me, as an actor, mm -hmm. it's costume. That's right. It's Facts. like if somebody goes to Walmart to work, they put on their uniform. For me, that's putting on a uniform, going out, making people laugh, okay. lifting them up, encouraging them, and and the the good that it does for so many people. My favorite moment in the show and i just finished the last show and so I, I that's what i wanted to talk on right <clears throat> two points and i gotta admit you know me being very conscious of you know the way we're portrayed as black men and um i'm always gonna put the disclaimer i am not a hundred percent black i am half mexican half black so but um the way that you know the black man is portrayed in media and film and is always pushed. I was 100% on board with Dave Chappelle and people who thought like him, you know. Even though I enjoyed Big Mama's House, I enjoyed watching Martin do his characters. I enjoyed watching Eddie Murphy do his characters, you know. So, but I, I was always conscious and cognizant of the, the imagery, you know. That used to be a thing. Emasculation was a thing that was implemented during the times of slavery, you know, a lot of people don't know that, you know, uh, I had learned in my studies, you know, say if a, um, you know, a, an alpha male amongst the slaves was um, being rebellious, oftentimes he would be beat and flogged in front of everyone. So they'll take the strongest amongst them and then emasculate them, whether it be through raping them, whether it be through castrating them, killing them or flogging them publicly and to seeing, you know, your toughest leader just weeping and crying in front of everybody, but to almost to play a mind game. So, you know, <clears throat> and that might be taking it too far or whatever, but um, there's always been this thing with white supremacy and emasculating the black man. Oops. So um, I being one of those people who was worried about that type of stuff, when I saw things like Medea, I wasn't necessarily a fan of it. I, you know, I had an instance in college where, it was so innocent now that I look back and think about it. But at the same time, you know, if I don't want to wear a dress, I don't have to wear a dress, you know. But it, I went to a game night, and I tried opening up out of my shell. And um, one of the games was um, 
who who looks the best in a dress. So, so like a fashion show. So they picked out three guys. I was one of them. We went that we went to the bathroom, and then they're like, "This is the game," and then they're handing us dresses, and I'm just like, "Wait, what?" And then he's like, "Yeah, yeah, put it, put on the dress, and then we're gonna go out there, and we're gonna try and whoever wins, and you win some money or something like that." And I was just like, maybe being overly woke, I guess, but um, I wasn't having it at all. It's not that I'm homophobic. I'm have nothing against transgender people or cross dressing people who like to do that type of stuff. But for me, I didn't want to like at the time. I still. Well, I kind of still do feel I don't want to dishonor my ancestors. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I elected not to play the game. They didn't trip or whatever. It was a little bit of weirdness. They're just like, okay, well, you know, it's like, yeah, I just that's not me. I don't want to do that. You know, so like, <clears throat> I w- I've always been hypersensitive to that emasculation, and it could be because you know, um, you know what I learned during my studies of, you know, black history and, you know, slavery and all that type of stuff. But if you notice, he says, um, no one was making me do it. No one was. And I had never thought of it like that. You know, I don't know if he's copping please or whatever, but I have never thought of it that no one's paying this man. He's making his own money. He owns everything. It's, it's entirely different. And I guess this is how I used to look at it. God damn, let me stop touching the mic. I used to look at it like, this is how we get on. Sell yourself, sell your, sell your soul, sell yourself out, sell yourself short, emasculate yourself. And you know, part of that came from listening to guys like Chappelle. Part of that came from listening to guys um, like Brother Polite and you know some of our you know black teachers. And um, you know, I, I was on that type of time, but. When I had never really thought of it, like, bro, he was, he is self-made, it's a character, and no one's making him do it. This is what he chose to do. You know, granted, you could still say, well, no one's making someone do something that's selling them out in order to, you know, connect to the masses or whatever, but he was making content for us, not necessarily for them. And on that grounds, I, I have to say... I, I, I'm, I'm a hypocrite like on that on that level I'm just like I do I like it no because usually that's what they make you do because Dave Chappelle's story I remember hearing that when I was a kid and he was like they were like can you put on the dress he said no they tried him again tried him again and they rewrote the movie whatever he was pretty firm on it you know um but that's because it's an outside entity for putting pressure on someone to do something. This guy is making content for us, not for necessarily for white America. He's making it for us and it's by us. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag FUBU. So it's like, I never really considered that. I, I, Cause usually it's some outside, you know, studio, Paramount, Warner, whatever, Lionsgate. And they're like, you know, oh, we want to do this. And if you don't want to get down, lay down, they'll just replace you, right? And that's where, you know, your morals and character and judgment come in. So when he said that, I was, uh, he put me up on a game because I was just like, wow. He's he's like, there's a difference. I was doing it because it's funny. Not because somebody would take a job from me for not doing it. You know what I'm saying? Or the only way, like, you know, like chitlins, like, here you go. We're going to take the lion's share. You can have the scraps, essentially, right? Well, either take the role or the role's not there for you no more. That's not the case here. He is he is the guy. He is the one. So on that grounds, I was I was totally like, whoa, that's crazy. So it's good always hearing it from the horse's mouth, I guess, is uh is what we wanna, you know, establish here. Alright, and then number two. Under see, we get away with a lot of stuff as rappers because we're rappers. You know what I'm saying? You're you're putting on, so he says, you know, I put on a costume when I go to work. This is not how I really am. It's a costume. And then I started thinking, I was like, how many other comedians of different race have dressed up like women and no one says nothing about it? Why is it always black men who get um, the backlash, you know, from our community? And And it's because of the history, but... No one says nothing when Adam Sandler does something or Rob Schneider. Some of these other comedian actors do the same thing. And no one says a damn thing about it. So 
it's it's very interesting the double standard that exists and that I was holding. So, you know, now I'm under the guise that you know comedians, and I, I heard Ari Spears. He has a um, DJ Vlad interview, and he said um, that's comedy 101, like putting on a dress. That's comedy 101. And when I when I when he explained it like that, I was like, oh, I never really considered it like that. I guess we just we're so um, hypersensitive, you know. The, the community to what's been done to us back during menstrual show times and all that stuff that um, we maybe we look too deep into it maybe I don't know but very interesting viewpoint and that's that's that changed my whole mind about this media because but I don't want to act like a hypocrite I've seen boo too I've seen boo I've seen Medea I've seen you know the brown family. I've seen a lot of his content, you know, um, why did I get married or something like that. Like I've seen a lot of his content in passing and I've actually went to a lot of his movies because he is a black creator and me and my family, that's how we operate. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but there is a difference between something like Black Panther, which was, which it was for us, but it wasn't necessarily by us, right? The director was black. The m majority of everybody in the movie was black, but where does the ownership lie? You know, where does the uh, where does the wealth lie? Not necessarily in our community. So, if anything happened in Black Panther that was questionable, it's not necessarily you know our call on whether or not we could take it out or put it in. You know what I'm saying? I mean, actors can just refuse to act, I guess. But this is an, an entirely different scenario, is what Tyler Perry's saying. That yo, no one is telling me to do this. I'm doing this because. One, I'm a comedian. Two, I'm an actor. And three, this is a character that I want to push because my grandma or my aunt is crazy and I feel like I can nail this character. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of blew my mind and changed my whole mind about, you know, Medea and, and just like how comedians can get away with things that necessarily, you know, regular people can't get away with it. And it's kind of crazy. I never really thought about rap compared to comedy. It's the same thing. A rapper is doing some rapper stuff, being ignorant, being da 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 da. Oh, he's a rapper, right? Don't take him serious. He's just an entertainer, right? So the same thing. If a comedian is doing something, don't take it too serious. He's just a comedian. He's an actor and a comedian. This is just a costume. This is just a, a, a get up for him, right? For your entertainment, you know. And he says, and I'm doing it to spread positivity and love, and cause laugh. Is positivity, you know what I'm saying? Helping people laugh, helping people feel better about themselves. All that stuff is very crucial, you know? So, uh, it's very good stuff. still alive. Yes, you is still alive. <laughs> but my favorite moment is the last 30 minutes of every play. That's when I'm sitting there. That's the only time I don't feel foolish or ridiculous because uh -huh. I get to sit on stage in front of thousands of people in arenas now. Man, plays in arenas. That's a damn All self thing. Man, that's, sitting there and I, I get can't, to... I can't believe it. I'm telling you, man, yeah. spit wisdoms that speak to people's lives in a way that that makes it all right for me so so s some people may not like the way that the uh, message got there yeah but it, for me it's important that the message landed and helped somebody i agree yeah. with you in totality i don't think people even have a problem with say you know you or whoever may choose to do a a character uh, of a woman yeah. as a male I believe it's being suggested that there is an agenda because girls do it all the time to guys like can I have your number can I have it can I have it that's one of the most amazing skits ever and there was a black woman portraying to be a thirsty ass dude you know to emasculate the black man yeah. to a certain degree and that is what is kind of put out there in sort of a, a and now that I think about it Medea was masculine as hell she was more thorough than certain dudes, man. Like, she used to keep a pistol on her everything, man. So it's like A propaganda kind of way. Now, what you're saying is, even if that is the rule, Tyler Perry is the exception. Well, well, listen, if people feel like that, I, I can't help people thinking. I can't help what they, what they feel or uh, how they come to the conclusion right. of, of that. But, again, for me and what, I, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm acting. That's right. 
period. That's right. You know, when I just yeah. played Colin Powell, I'm not Colin. <laughs> I was acting. Excellent. You know, and Alex Excellent Cross, point. by the way. And Alex Cross. Which I'm is not, one of my favorite books. Thank you, brother. I'm not I'm not I'm not James Patterson's Alex Cross, but I'm an actor. Right. So and I think that it's unfair to have an actor not be able to portray anything he wants to or right. she wants to Excellent as a point. character Excellent because point. of someone's opinion. So I'm Excellent point. Could you please uh talk to the general And it's funny, on top of that, it's funny. It's not it's not coonery. It's it's funny. You know, so gracious the listeners of Expeditiously about funny. the sacrifice of accepting the bag right now yeah. versus have. Okay, guys, all things black podcasts. We out. <laughs>